everybody, and welcome to this episode of NFL Daily. I'm Harris Rubenstein. This handsome gent next to me is Tom Downey. Thank you. I needed, Tom, I needed that. You need a little boost? I did. I did, I did need that. Well, thank I got you. the best boost of the oh, week. It is NFL Power Rankings time, one of my favorite shows that we do here on NFL Daily. We got updates and power rankings. We were kind of wrong last week in, like, a lot. Rankings, I wasn't on the show, so I get to declare right, that, that, that I was off air. Fair enough, fair enough. Although not anymore because now we're doing AP style with you. That's very they're true. All, they're so all AP style. The, the staff has voted. Yes. So there will be disagreements on it. So if if we are wrong, you can blame the whole Chat Sports Studio. I can just pretend just it me. wasn't me. Exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. But first things first, I want to get into some news and notes because this first news and note that we have is probably one of the most interesting ones that we've seen so far on our news and notes segment. Aaron Hernandez has apparently had severe CTE, and now his family is suing the NFL and the New England Patriots for $20 million. Mm. BU, Boston University, is doing the big CTE study, said it was the worst case of CTE in a 27-year-old they have ever seen. At this point, it's truly gotten to the point where I, I, when an NFL player has something wrong with them, I'm like, oh, he probably has CTE. And at this yep. point, I don't know what NFL players either don't or, or will not have CTE. Yep. Like, I it's just rampant across the NFL. My, my question, this, though, is, this is what football does t- to your brain. My question for like the BU people when they release this is the most severe of any 27-year-old. It's like, how many dead 27-year-old former football players do you have on Not record? Not a ton. N- not many. And so you know, it could be like out of three, he's the most. But I'm sh- I'm sure, like, it's kind of obvious at this point that NFL concussions, CT, like, it's, it's there. Yeah, it's, it's there. there. This All is. This is the known risk of playing Very true. football. All right, moving on to our next news and note here. The, a couple of NFL players, including Malcolm Jenkins of the Philadelphia Eagles, who's been a very vocal activist, have sent Roger Goodell a letter wanting the league to support their activism efforts. And you I'm know pretty what? sure Roger Goodell probably said no. You know what? Good for the players. Yes, great for the players. They are role models. They yeah. should be taking act- a- activist stance. Mm-hmm. We, we always try and say, oh, these, these football players are role models. They need, to be, they need to be good people. Now they're trying to stand up for what they believe in, and it's like, nah, stick to my football. Mm-hmm. Like, only do sports. And, and it's Come also, on, but like, at the same time, is Roger Goodell going to do anything about this? And if they no. haven't already done something no. about this, are they going to do something in the future? No, but at least getting it out there and telling them that, that, that you sent the letter is, is, you know, puts you in a better light. And, it's Goodell. Yeah, like, and he's going to do what the owners want, and that is just stay as neutral as humanly right. possible. And Roger Goodell also, uh, his contract, which was, you know, I guess held back by Jerry, by Jerry Jones, yeah. is expected to go through anyway. Jerry Jerry got the, the message through. Yes, he did. All right, anyway. moving on to our third news and note of the day. Ricky Williams, the former NFL star, has been arrested in Texas mm-hmm. right down the street from but here. But not actually. what you think of. What but was it not for? what you think for. Uh, he didn't have a back license plate so that prompted the pull so over he wasn't and then he had like marijuana. then he had like an outstanding ticket so he yeah. didn't wasn't having like he didn't have like 10 ounces it of was marijuana it was not for marijuana which I, which I would have put a lot Very of money surprising. on that's what, I, I would I would have put about two ounces worth of marijuana yeah. worth of money <laughs> on that him having it so all right ladies and gentlemen just a reminder that this episode is brought to you by my bookie Tom yeah. Harris, there are a lot it's of on, there are a lot of online sports books out there. It's incredible. My bookie is the best one though. This is the, this is the sports book I use. It's my favorite. If you guys use promo code chat when you sign up, they will double your initial deposit up to a thousand dollars. You put down three hundred, they're gonna this, give this you the, a free three hundred. This is this yeah. might be my favorite deal we do. Yeah. You, you just give me free money. Yeah. My bookie just gives me money. Yeah. It's amazing. What so, a deal. To bet and then for you to lose. <laughs> You, but you guys can win money. I got killed against the spread this week. Absolutely, you were, killed. We, we were better this week, which is which is yes. a positive sign. We'll, Tom won. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, we'll win those. We'll, we'll mention that later on the show. Again, it's mybookie.ag promo code chat when you sign up. They will match your initial deposit. And Tom, with that being said, it is now time for NFL Power Rankings. And starting at 32, I'm glad the office has finally caught on. It is the worst team in football, the Indianapolis. This was boy, this was not my pick. Really? I did not have Colts at 32. No. no. They're so bad. Because I think, hint, hint, the next team on our list is worse. I, I think that the Colts gave the Cardinals a decent game. They are riddled with injuries right now. By the end of the year, I am very confident the Colts will not be th- 32. That's fair. I am very confident that's, in that. That's fair. However, right now, I'm sorry, you go into any game where you're at home and you're an underdog against the Browns, I'm sorry. 
You, you're yeah. the worst team in football. <laughs> I, I honestly think the Jets would also be that. I think the, I think the Jets are also up, uh, on that list as well. And speaking, I don't think the Browns are as bad as we try and think that they are. Well, I, I think the Browns are better, but we have them a little bit low in our power rankings, but they did just kind of get absolutely trounced mm -hmm. uh, this past week. But speaking of the New York Jets and also being really, really badly, or really bad, excuse me, bigly badly, they are number 31 here, and they got crushed by the Raiders this weekend. Not surprising, but they got crushed. This is just not a good Jets team. Like, I was actually surprised they put up so many points. That kind of concerns me a little bit about that Raiders pass defense. But the acting Jets owner said the team isn't tanking. And I'm like, well, then he just put together a bad football they team. They have the number one tanking quarterback in NFL history. They have Josh McCown. He is the tank quarterback. And now they're going to use a three-man rotation at, at a halfback with Forte, Bilal Powell, and uh, Elijah McGuire, who's just not any good. So it's like, oh, well, there's no fantasy value here either. Yeah. So. Well, the, the one person that has fantasy value, however, is Jermaine Curse. Caught two touchdown passes this past week. Who knows? I'm, might be a nice... I'm, I'm never going to start Jermaine Might Kirst be a nice fantasy. flex option or wide receiver three uh, for those in the very large wide receiver okay. options. Okay. But moving on to number 30, Tom, your number 32 team, the Cleveland Browns. I don't have the Browns at 32. Oh, you did? I had the Browns oh, higher. Okay. I had the Browns at 29. You the Browns at 29? I, I think we are underselling this Browns team. Only by like a couple spots. I mean, but they, like, they're fun to watch. They're going to be. At least they've good. scored a touchdown this That's year. <laughs> like, look, it's Cleveland. They're look. They're still rebuilding. They're not going to be great. But at least they're favored this week. They will win games this year. A hey, big shame. That's though. all I got. Big shame that Corey Coleman's uh, going to be out for probably six to seven weeks. He's on IR. Probably he's going to, to return this season. Mm -hmm. One of the better young wide receivers in football. I was expecting a big, big breakout season from him. Just can't stay on the field. Yeah. Big, big shame to see Corey Coleman going out. And mm -hmm. Isaiah Crowell in the contract year. We'll see if he can start putting up the bigger stats than we thought. My fantasy team needs him. Absolutely. Moving on to number 29. Speaking of fantasy teams, the Carlos Hyde led San Francisco 49ers have a great defense. Can't score touchdowns, but they come in at number 29. A team who I think is actually a little bit underrated in terms of the, what they can do on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, it's, it's curious to me here about this, this 49ers team, and I hope that they're better going forward. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to see them actually have an offense here. And I, but the problem is, is that when you're led by Brian Hoyer, and Brian Hoyer isn't very good, I'm, I'm going to err on the side that this San Francisco 49ers team, it's just, you know, it's having a time rebuilding. The defense is solid. The defensive front seven's been great. Fun fact, I know pro football focus is just one part of a very big puzzle, but DeForest Buckner is actually ranked, is, is the highest ranked interior pass rusher in the NFL right now, which is pretty outstanding. Of course, the Niners will play the Rams on Thursday night. That game is going to be sparsely attended. Yeah, that game is could going very to be, well be the worst ever. It's going to be. I, I, I'd in, like to say before, in US if this game wasn't on NFL Network, I don't think even the NFL Network would be covering this football game. All right, moving on. Oh, excuse me. We have a reaction poll. For, oh, no, excuse me. We're going to come to the reaction poll after this one. Number 28, a team that continues to make me look stupid, the Cincinnati Bengals. This team is awful. Look, their offensive so line bad. is brutal. So like, the, the play calling is brutal. With that said, I think the Bengals, they can only go up here. Mm -hmm. They can only go up from, from this point on. Yeah, and, and, you know, they just fired the offensive coordinator, Ken Zam, uh, Zampezi. Is that how you say his name? Ken Zampezi. Zampezi yep. is now out. He's Bill awful. Laser comes in. He, their offense, Not a huge upgrade. Their offense last year was 24th in the NFL. The year before that, it was 6th. So, and this year, obviously, they haven't scored a touchdown yet through two games. So, not really what you're looking for from the Bengals. And we're not going to have them on this list, but we have a reaction poll for the people at home. Who do you think is the worst team in the NFL? Throw us a heart for the Colts, a wow of face for the Jets, a laughing face for the Browns, and an angry face for the 49ers. We all know what my pick's going to be. I'm throwing them a bunch of hearts. It's the Jets. I'm throwing the them Jets. I, I know. Do you, you you're think going the Colts would beat the Jets in a game? And probably what would be right the worst now? football game ever? Right now? Or in like... Right now. Honestly, I think I might go with the Colts. Really? It would honestly depend on, on who was home. That's fair. I think for the most part, though, it would be like I just don't think the Jets are any good. It would be like the not, like a like a six to three football like, game. Like like the difference is the Colts actually do have some talent. It's just all hurt right now. The difference is the Jets just suck. <laughs> like, 
That's fair. That's the that, that's what's going on there. But, but you can I'm also sorry. Be, I am sorry, Jets fans. I have been very mean to you this year, and I'm going to continue to be to be to be very mean for you. It's not going to go. So you're right. lucky, Browns fans. I'm giving you guys the break this year. <laughs> I've been brutal the past year for you guys. Just just coming at their neck for sure. It's okay, right. I'm from Ohio. Ohio, I'm allowed to be. Speaking of actually, no, not speaking of Ohio. We just did the Bengals. Moving on to number 27 on our list. You, we thought, have, you, thought, you, you thought you had the perfect transition. I did, there, and I you? missed you it. You had. I missed it. But we have the Chicago Bears. Mike Glennon has been pretty rough, but a lot of drop passes so far for the Chicago Bears. It's almost like they have no wide receivers on their team. They don't. So, they, they're all like, it's, this is just it, – at a certain point, we just need to see Trubisky. Yes. And just, like, let's just do it. Like, Mike Glennon put up decent numbers. It was all garbage time. Like this, the touchdown pass was, was 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 under two minutes. This was a Bears team, also mind you, that in the preseason kept telling people to watch out for them, that they were going to surprise a lot of people. And the rest of the NFL was just. I like, like the way no. they were going, and I'm like, their offseason was like, oh, this is this was not good decisions their made. The defense is bad. The defense is like it has like a bunch of okay players on. They it. need more impact players. They have yes. Floyd, their outside linebacker, and it's like they have. That's kind of. I don't, of, I, I don't like, think I can name you a single corner they have. Is Kyle Fuller still on the team? Yeah, Fuller's still there. Does he, does for he now. start? Yeah. That's not good. All right, moving on to number 26, the Buffalo Bills. No one circles the wagon like the Buffalo Bills, many, especially when, when it comes. How many times are you going to say lol today? I don't know, just a couple times until we get at least to the top 15 because okay. all these teams are lol worthy. The Buffalo Bills lost in the most recent game because Zay Jones dropped a very tough pass. I'll give him that. It was a tough was pass. Tough. But hey, drop nonetheless. Idea. Why don't you get the ball to Shady? Yeah, probably. Um, He's probably just, the best player on your just team. Just a thought. He's by far the best player on your team, yeah. I think, especially with, with Cordy Glenn Hurt and Marcel Darius being the last the year we've seen from Marcel Darius, yep. past year and a half. Uh, so get the ball to LaShawn McCoy. I know teams are gonna stop to stop the run here, but just okay. get him the ball. Like, you should be able to run the football like, in the I NFL. I have to think that you give LaShawn McCoy 25 carries. He'll give you at least 100 yards. It was, that, that was a one-score game pretty much the entire time, and you gave the, you gave the ball under 15 times I don't on the it. ground. I don't understand. Run the football. It. Moving on to another team that I do not understand. It's the Arizona Cardinals. They barely beat the Colts in Indianapolis. This team is rough without David Johnson. Rough. Yeah, and they're going to keep being rough. At least Carson Palmer looked a little bit better in the second half of that game. They're very, they are very, very beat up right now. We, we've talked a lot about how Baltimore and the Los Angeles Chargers are beat up. Arizona is yep. missing a lot of key players, not just David Johnson. John Brown is hurt again. Deion Buchanan has been hurt. Uh, the left side of the line with, with Mike Ayapati and D, DJ Humphreys has been hurt. Mm. That's not a recipe for success. So injuries playing a huge role here. And, and I have a question for you now that we, uh, t we're going to have a little, uh, we're going to have a react, excuse me, a weigh in here for which QB has you worried the most. Is Car is this Carson Palmer's fault? Because I would have Carson Palmer as the Q QB that's worried me the most. Is this all him? Because I think Cam Newton could be on this list as well. I think Tyrod Taylor might be on this list. I think Andrew Luck, even though he hasn't played a single game, should be on this list. Who is the QB that's worried well, you? For starters, it's never just on the QB. That, 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 that's the easy thing to do because it's the quarterback. They get all the credit and, and they, get, they get all the blame when things go wrong. It has most certainly not been just Carson Palmer, but Carson Palmer has not looked good. That's fair. And I think for the most part, he's and having the, a lot of issues throwing outside of the numbers, but I really haven't seen him I just... I, like, he's throwing the ball well deep down the field, but he's been very inaccurate. In the for me, game. and it, it is Andy Dalton. And the Andy Dalton we have seen this year is not remotely what we have seen over his career. His mm. career, he is a, we'll call it, 63% completion percentage, a, a pretty positive to, to interception ratio. Yeah, he wilts under pressure, but this year he's completing under 55% of his Yikes. passes. Only Ke Case Keenum has been worse among qualified passers. Uh -huh. And he has four interceptions and still no TDs. And that also leads back to a common theme with the QBs that we've all mentioned. Newton, Palmer, Dalton, their offensive lines are bad. Yes, fact. And you got to protect the quarterback. We'll have a, uh, a little bit of a weigh-in slash reaction poll for you guys later. But before we move on, let's take a look at our most recent eight. We have number, th uh, number 32, excuse me, the Indianapolis Colts. We have the Jets at 31, the Browns at 30, the San Francisco 49ers at 29, and then the Bengals at 28, the Bears at 27, the Bills at 26, and the Cardinals at 25. And Tom, this show is sponsored by one of our, my favorite sponsors we have, MyBookie. MyBookie.ag, they've been in the business for years and their reputation is rock solid, 100% cash bonuses. Mm -hmm. So off the bat, you're getting money. You put I down 300, it. they're gonna give you a free 300. I, I love I know free $300. Yeah, this I know. might be 
The only thing I love more than free three hundred dollars is a free four hundred dollars, and they can also give you they that. They can give you that too. It's unbelievable. Fast payouts as well. Just two business days. No, no, you know, having to wait for weeks for that mm -hmm. for that check to come through from some of the other betting sites. Use promo code chat when you sign up. Again, they will match that initial deposit. Head to mybookie.ag. It is once again promo code chat. Our sponsor for today's show. It's pretty unbelievable. I'm, I'm all about this deal. Just, it's just free money, people. <laughs> Go do it. If don't use the other ones. Go use my bookie. <laughs> but we're going to move on here to number 24 and the team that was probably given the biggest beatdown of last Sunday. It is the New Orleans Saints. They got absolutely smoked at home by the Patriots. They got absolutely smoked the week before by the Vikings. This defense is bad. This defense has been bad. Drew Brees looks like Drew Brees. This, this Saints team is going nowhere. Time it's the defense. It the the, off, the offense has been a little iffy early on. I think I think they're working in some new pieces. The offensive line has some injuries. I still trust Drew Brees to put up good numbers in fantasy and, 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 and you know in games to put up those yards, put up the TDs. But look, it's been the case for years now. The defense just isn't any good. Yep. And I and I've had Saints fans before on this show and articles say, oh, the defense isn't that bad. I'm like, guys, like, it is. The defense. Is like, I'm sorry. The defense like, is absolutely it's, like your 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 offense is super, super Bowl caliber. Your defense is first pick in the draft. Remember, guys, to leave us a couple comments if you want to ask us questions as we go through our power rankings here. We've gotten a couple so far, so we'll bring them up on the screen as we go. But moving on to number 23, we have the Houston Texans. And, Tom, I have a great stat for you. Yeah, they you play it. the New England Patriots this week. The, the, any rookie quarterback, the past eight rookie quarterbacks that play the Patriots, they're 0-8. But They're Deshaun Watson's a winner. Deshaun is a winner, but he's not going to beat the Patriots. <laughs> no, although the Texans did beat the Patriots last year, of course. Fair. That was with uh, Jacoby Brissett at yep. quarterback, now with the Indianapolis Colts. No, they won that the game last year. They, they oh, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. I'm, you're right. You're right. I'm, I'm sorry. I think you're fine. You're no, fine. You're right. Uh, but yeah, so Houston, I don't like this team. I don't think they're that good. I, I think Look, the, they escaped against the Bengals who couldn't even score a, a touchdown. And, and it took one broken Deshaun Watson play to do it. And they cut Jalen Strong this week, was, one of the bigger busts as a wide receiver. They really thought he was going to step up and be that number two guy next to DeAndre Hopkins. It never worked out. And then Will Fuller is also hurt as well still. So, so. just a rough set of things. And here comes Jonathan Banks, who's apparently going to save them from the wrath They're of They're banged Brady. up a corner. They just need a body. It's not going to be good. They're just, they're just not any good. And I, and I said that before the year started. All right, moving on to number 22. It is Los Angeles football team number one it is the Los Angeles Rams they got a game coming up against the 49ers might be one of the most least watched primetime games we've had oh, in a it's, long it's time gonna, I mean look if this is look folks if this is if there's a game you got to skip this week and you don't want to get up early for the London game go ahead and skip I'll this, put it this one way, though this do, Rams do your team is a this Rams offense is actually more fun than I think they get credit for Jared Goff actually leads the NFL in completion percentage on passes over 20 yards I Which is a big surprise from last is, year because he was surprise. last last that year is, in that, that category. Th that is quite a surprise there. Look, he's, he's, he's also never won on the road in, in his career. And the Rams, for <laughs> whatever reason, have some issues with the 49ers the past, past few years. That, I think that whole NFC West kind of has issues with each other as the, they go that, on. That is also true. Very true. All right, moving on to number 21, a team that was so good last week. But as usual, they, they jaguared that game. The Jacksonville Jaguars at number 21. They got smoked by the Titans. They got put in a pipe and smoked. Look, the Titans are a good team, and Jacksonville is going to be Jacksonville. They're going to need to run the football. They have to have their defense step up. Guess what happened? The defense had some issues, and they got behind, mm -hmm. and they were screwed. And Ryan Nasib officially rejoins his former what? college coach of Doug Marone from Syracuse. The Syracuse boys are back together. You got bums like Nassib <laughs> getting signed, and Colin Kaepernick and RG3 can't get an NFL uh, team. It's ridiculous. It. But Nassib knows the offense. Like, it's like <laughs> it doesn't take you a couple weeks to learn an offense when we'll you're actually going to be needed to play. We'll see our first Idiocy. London game this week when they take on the Ravens. Got to get up really great. It's going to be a rough one. Moving on to Los Angeles football team number two. We have the Los Angeles Chargers, who again were Chargers. down seven. We were down under seven points going to the fourth quarter, and again lost. This is what this is what the Chargers do. Lost ten of their last eleven games when they are down by seven or fewer points going into the fourth. In quarter. one score games, they are four and eighteen in twenty fifteen, which only means Harris that they have to start winning. That's how odds work. Anthony Lynn uh, says that all that stuff is in the past. And are they are only looking at the future? Which yes, means, correct. Which, it is in the past, Anthony Lynn. However, you're you're 4 and 18 in the past. Yeah. 
So not great. So it does matter. Not great. So we have a way in here for you guys. We want you to leave us a couple of comments. Let us know which LA team would you rather watch play? Tom, I'm going to give this one to you. Is this a home game? Am I going to a home game? Yes, yes. Okay, we're well, going then, to a home game. I've never been to the Coliseum, so I'm, I'm picking the Rams. Going to the Rams. Okay. I, I want to go see, see them play. I, I actually, don't want to go see a game at the StubHub Center. Come I on. actually organically disagree with you. I actually want to go see a game at the StubHub Center because soccer stadiums are really fun to go and watch sporting events at. And I feel like a football game at a soccer stadium would actually yeah, be a pretty good Yeah, but it's experience. the Chargers. I, I, I love Phil Rivers. <laughs> he's not good, but okay. he's just, he's a gunslinger, he's man. He's good. He's, oh, he's, the rest of the team's not that people good. People think that Phil Rivers is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Phil Rivers is not a Hall of Fame quarterback. Who are we kidding? Doesn't have the ring. Uh, that's fair. And unfortunately, that matters. It, it, it's a little bit rough. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move on here to number 19. A team that was almost in the top 10 two weeks ago and is now sitting at 0-2 with maybe the worst offensive line in all of football, the New York Giants at number 19. The Giants were Good one. God. This is, I, I regret not going harder on this. The Giants were a regression candidate for me this year. I had a list of several teams. Houston was among them. The Giants were one of them because of their point differential. Mike, I still trust their defense. The offense will be fine. I'll, I'll stick with them. Uh, I regret it. Because that offensive line is, hor is horrifically bad. And it was funny for me to see Ben McAdoo publicly call out Eli Manning, oh. who's got two and a half seconds every time he, he, he drops back. Uh, well, let's call out Eric Flowers, who couldn't block me. I'll say this about Eli Manning. He did come out in a press conference and say that this is what I like out of a coach. I want a coach to challenge me. I like being coached, this and that. But, but... <laughs> Eli's not the one to yell at. God, this offensive line is bad. I, lo I love it. You had the offseason stories. Eric Flowers is getting ready for this season. He looks quick. He looks fast. Everyone just, our, no. Our, our, Good our, God, our, no. Our, I love our media storyline voice today. It's been funny. Ooh, it's so bad. Yeah. This Giants offensive line is awful. And also, go watch the w uh, WFAN uh, radio thing about the Giants offensive mm. line from today. The rant is incredible. Go look it up on Twitter. But moving on to number 18 here, we have the Minnesota Vikings. Again, another team who we don't really know what the deal is with because we've only seen one game of Sam Bradford. Case Keenum starting against the Steelers. What about is what you would expect? I actually had them higher. I, I had them at 16. So it's only, okay. I actually, I liked it because my, my personal power rankings were not that different from what ended up happening. So I, I guess that means that I'm right. So yeah, you're always right. It, this, the questions around Sam Bradford is, is the concern. Yep. Look, he's practicing. He's been limited. We'll see if he actually plays. His knee is not in a great, in, not in great shape right now. No. We'll see. When he is out there, I think this is easily a top 15 team. When he's not, I think 18, you know, mid to low 20 is better because Case Keenum is just not going to get the job done. And we've known that for years. I had the Vikings at 16, which I had them at exact league average because well, I again, I have. We have no idea how good this football team is yet because Sam Bradford has only played one game and it was against the Saints. Mm -hmm. So we'll see more from the Vikings. I think they're going to they're, they're gonna be a little bit higher than 18 as the season goes on. But moving on to number 17 on the list, another team that I think can qualify as exactly league average, the Washington Redskins, who look dead red set on an 8-8 eight eight season. This is such an 8-8 eight eight football team, it that's, physically hurts and me. And that's what they've been yes. for the past two years. And they've, they've made some improvements, but they've lost some players as well, so it's, it's kind of a net gain there in the end. And I don't love this Redskins team, and I've been stuck with Kirk Cousins on, on some fantasy rosters. That touchdown catch helped me. Mm -hmm. uh, the defense has some issues, but the offense needs to be more consistent when they run the ball, too. Yep. The, the ground game has been very inconsistent. One other note here is that they play Sua Cravens on the reserve slash left the team list, left squad list. That means... His season's done. His season's done. His season is done. He and was rumored to maybe retire this offseason. Just, I, I, he didn't, you know, he had a big concussion last year, and he'd almost lost his vision. And that that's a huge blow for Washington, because Cravens was a high draft He's really that. good. He's He can play. He, he plays he that nice that, little combo, Landon Collins, Patrick Chung, he's, safety he's, linebacker. He, I, I think he, this way was last year, I think he's the kind of the ideal Deion Buchanan for them. Yep, that exactly. linebacker safety hybrid, but. That's a big loss for them. Mm -hmm. Indeed, indeed. All right, moving on to our league average team before we get into the top 15. At number 16, after a, I wouldn't say impressive, but it was a win nonetheless against the Chargers. Jay Cutler looked like Jay Cutler. Fine. The Dolphins kind of looked, I think, as everyone expected them to look. The defense is just okay. The offense is a little bit above average. They're going to go 9-7. and seven. The two notes here for me are on linebacker right now, mm -hmm. and the kind of the more long-term notes. Is that they, they <laughs> traded for Stephon Anthony, yep. who, was, who was a bust for the Saints, Big couldn't get on bust. the field. 
They did that because they've suspended Lawrence Timmons indefinitely. He had the weird incident where he just kind of like went AWOL Saturday night before oh, the game. Wild thing. The Dolphins didn't know where he was. They, they, they put on a missing persons report. It was, it was a mess, and I think Timmons was just kind of upset with the team for some reason. So uh, he has been suspended indefinitely. Players said that they would, you know, they would in invite him back, yep. but the coaching staff was like, eh. We'll yeah, see. Not gonna happen. We'll see about that. A one. reminder that all of us here at Chat Sports had the Dolphins at either 17, 16, or 16, 17, or 18 because, again, they are the league average football team. All right. We'll only see one game from them, too. That's fair. All right. Let's move into a little bit of a summary here. Let's go 32 to 16. We got the Colts at 32, the Jets at 31, the Browns at 30, the Niners at 29, we got the Bengals at 28, the Bears at 27. The Buffalo Bills, because no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills at 26. The Cardinals at 25. The Saints at 24. Texans at 23. Los Angeles football team number one at 22. The Jacksonville Jaguars at 21. Los Angeles football team number two at number 20. <laughs> we have the Giants at 19. The Vikings at 18. And the Washington Redskins at number 17. And a reminder, everyone, that this episode is brought to you by my book. The internet's number one sportsbook. You can bet on the NFL, college football, and much, much more. We use it for all of our all bets. Of if you use promo code CHAT when you sign up, they will match your initial deposit up to 1000 bucks. So you put down 200 you put down 300 they'll match that for it's you impressive. to bet. It's an unbelievable yeah. deal. It's one of the best deals that we have here mm -hmm. at Chat Sports. Remember, myboogie.ag, use promo code CHAT, C-H-A-T, for those at home who need a little spelling help. All right. Let's move in to the top 15 that I we think have everyone here. Everyone watching can spell chat. That's Harris. fair. That's <laughs> fair. All right, number 15, the Philadelphia Eagles. I have a fun stat for you. Okay, uh, what Tom you got? Downey. What you got? The in any game that Carson Wentz has played where the opponents have scored 20 points or more, he is 0 and 8. In games where teams have scored less than 20 points, he is 10 and 0. This is an unbelievable statistic over time. 10 and 0 if you score under 20. 0-8 if you score over 20. That is, that is a ridiculous statistic. That is, I, I just, I can't get over it. I've never heard of anything like that before. Like, it's usually it's like, kind of like maybe like a 60-40 split, maybe a 75-25. It is 100% to 0%. I don't get it. That's a, well, I, I can tell you why. Because Eagles don't run the football. <laughs> so when they do run the football, they take some more time off the clock, and they, they, they make life easier on their defense. And when their defense has some, some tough times, mm -hmm. Carson Wentz is a second-year player with no with very limited players around him last year. Yes. Now, this year, I think it'll be better. We saw a bit of a better effort against the Chiefs. A couple notes here. LeGarrette Blunt has been a non-factor for this offense. Yep. Chance Warmack is taking over at left guard. The former he is bust new for the Titans, so we'll see how he turns out. But again, ladies and gentlemen, guess how many points the Chiefs scored last week? 27. 27, and hey, look at that. The Eagles lost 27 yeah, to 20. What a, what, a, what a weird, <laughs> weird thing we got going on. All right. Moving on to number 14, and speaking of weird teams, the Carolina Panthers are a really weird team. And guess what, Tom? Adding Matt Khalil did not, in fact, heal their offensive line. Well, they who could have saw that worse. one coming they they outside of worse. everyone except for apparently the Carolina Panthers front office? Can I use the, my media voice again? Because we yeah. heard all offseason, oh, Matt Khalil looked great. He was going to solve the offensive line issues for the Panthers. No, not at all. Hasn't happened. Not even close. Cam Newton is getting crazy rushed every single game again and now Greg Olson is by out. By the way, Ryan Khalil has a neck injury. He no. has not practiced, so if he can't go, that makes things really bad for Carolina. Greg Olson placed on IR with a broken foot. The, if the Panthers obviously like, doesn't have Ryan Khalil, they are in serious, serious trouble. More so than they, than they are already were. Do you think Ryan Khalil like pokes fun at his brother for being so much better at his position than he is? No, I don't think he does. I, I think he's like, God dang it, Matt. Can you please start doing things right? So speaking of offensive lines, we've been talking about them a bunch this show. We want to hear from you guys. Please leave us a comment. And Tom, I'll ask you this because this is a conversation you and I have had before. Is offensive line play in the NFL at an all-time low? Because boy, oh boy, is it bad. It's horrible. Like, I, I, would, I, would, I would have to guess that like in the early days of football, far before I was born, that the offensive line play was awful because no one really knew what they were doing. Mm -hmm. But at least as long as I've been alive and, and kind of more modern NFL, I don't like there's maybe it's not at an all time low, but the disparity 
yeah. has never been greater. You get teams like the Raiders, the Titans, the Cowboys that are loaded with offensive line talent and, and others that I'm, I'm leaving out. And then you got teams like the Giants, the Panthers, and the Seahawks that just haven't invested, or at least haven't invested properly. And it's killing the, their teams. It's destroying the Seahawks. I mean, they, this the Giants are 0-2 because of their offensive this line. This is what happens when you're the Seahawks and you try to make a bunch of defensive tackles into offensive linemen. Well, like, literally well, what, what do you think, think is going to happen, Tom Cable? So, uh, it's look, in, the, in today's NFL salary cap, you have to go cheap at certain areas. You, you mm -hmm. can't invest all of your money everywhere. You just, you just don't have enough money. So, certain teams are like, hey, you know, the Giants are like, hey, we're, we're just not going to invest in, in – in, in linebackers, we're going we're gonna to ignore that spot. Cowboys like, yeah, we don't really need safeties. We'll try and go cheap there. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll try and go cheap at the backup quarterback spot. And then you got teams like Seattle that goes, we're going to go cheap on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. And it is killing them. Yeah. It has is, it is, it is taken what I think is the best roster in the NFL, top to bottom, outside, outside of that one position, yep. and made them into a 500 team right yep. now. I agree. And we have a great comment here. Uh, we have a couple comments here. One from Thomas Walton who says that defensive ends are just getting better. We have another mm -hmm. comment as well from a uh, friend of the show, Richard Allen Harris Jr., who says the same exact thing, that uh, de defensive line play is just getting better. I think it's a it's combination of both. It, it probably is. I think the offensive linemen are so unbelievably bad. I think you're seeing an – like, I think this goes back to college recruiting and college just fundamentals and teaching in general, that defensive line play in college has gotten so unbelievably competitive. I mean, Clemson just pumped out – two drafted NFL linemen off a championship team and are probably going to have three this next yeah, season. So it's just they're turning these guys out. One is out. ineligible. Yes. But, but yeah, yes. Yeah. So, all right. They're, they're loaded. Moving on here. We're getting close to the top 10, but not quite. We're going to go to lucky number 13. We have the Tennessee Titans. Got their season back on track against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mariota looks great. Derrick Henry looks great. No Corey Davis next week, but it's just a little hamstring injury. The offensive line looks amazing. This is still my AFC South favorite. And yeah, they, absolutely. And, and they've, they've been the favorite for me for quite a while. Yes. And they've been it really since, I think, since the preseason once I started to try, really dive in. Like, okay, who's going to regress? Who's going to take a step forward? Tennessee is the team ready to take that next step forward. And I think that a lot of people... They, they, look, are, they are the Raiders where they were last year. And I think a lot of people look at their defense and they, they ask a bunch of questions. I actually like their defense. I think their defense is built with a lot of gr like good, not great football players. I think that Brian Arakpo has brought a very good uh, veteran leadership to that linebacker core. Derek Morgan still there. DN doing really good things. Signed Logan Ryan in the offseason, who I think is more of a number two corner than number one. And, and that's kind but of he's serviceable at one, yeah. I think. He's going to do just fine. I, I want another, for them to make a true, honest Super Bowl run, I want another impact player or two on the defense, be mm -hmm. it a corner, be it at inside Linebacker. I, I think if they're going into the the uh, trade deadline or we're around the trade deadline, you see a team that's you know maybe I don't know five and three, maybe they're sitting at five and two, looking for another little bump on the defensive side of the ball. I think that they could make a move. Definitely, I think corner would have to be the way to go. I think their front seven, for the most part, with Jarrell Casey sitting there as well, I love is Jarrell solid Casey. enough. I that, think it's solid enough to get the job play. done. So Daquan Jones has actually been pretty good this yep. year as well. Yeah, former Indeed. mid round pick out of Penn State. Yep. All right. Moving on to number 12 here, a team that is 100% defense, the Baltimore Ravens. This offense is bad, this offense is bad, but their defense might just be the best in football. This is where I had them in my power rankings, and I'm like, God, they're, they're not actually the, the, the 12th team in the NFL, but they're undefeated. Yep. They forced 10 turnovers already. Mm -hmm. That's five every game. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And it's a team that in the offseason just reinforced what they were already good at. The secondary was already good. They yeah. add Tony Jefferson to get even better. They're, they're, they can run the ball really well, and they play great at home. But the issue is now, in my opinion, if you're, if you're going to ask me to take one offensive lineman in football and build an offensive line around him, I, I'm going to choose Marshall Yonda. Marshall Yonda, to me, is the best individual offensive lineman in football because he can play left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right guard, and also center, and play them at an elite level. Elite he, at the very least, he, he is a top two guard yes. in the NFL. That Him out for the season it's is huge. a massive blow. The Ravens offense is going to have some issues going forward you, without you, Yonda. You That's can, a critical blow. You can make an argument that Marshall Yonda, I know he's an offensive lineman and I might get some crap for this. You can make an argument that Marshall Yonda is one of the five most important players on this entire football team. Oh, I agree. And it's, I, I Definitely on the offensive side of the ball, especially with the other losses on that offensive line, mm -hmm. like Ricky Wagner, who yep. went over to the Lions. Losing Yonda, who was their best, I think really their best offensive player, Yeah, that's a massive blow. Even if he's just 
just the guard, yep. he's critical. And a couple of years ago, he was also out for the year, but they had Kalechi Osemele on the team at the now time. Now filled right in. He's obviously now in Oakland they, as they, maybe the best guard in football with pin Yano one and two. Over, so yeah. we'll see what happens with the Ravens as the year goes on. Jeremy Langford didn't play a role at all, but we'll see what Terrence West can do with a Marshall Yonda-less offensive yes. line. Alrighty, we're almost at the top 10, but we got one more team to go. This, in my opinion, is the most overrated team that we have on this list. The only reason that they're at number 11 is because they're 2-0, and it's the Detroit Lions. I am not I am not inspired by this team at all. It's funny. I don't think they're I, I, have, I have long drawn the ire of, of Detroit fans on this show uh, for not being a big believer in Detroit, but they just beat the New York Giants, who I thought was going to be a wild card team again this year. I think this is the perfect. I think this is exactly where Detroit should be. I know that they're two and zero, and that their offensive line has some issues. The pass rush stepped up much better against a, a bad Giants offensive line. This is this is a team that is going to compete for a playoff spot. But like wild card, but they're going to compete. for What is a realistic record for this, this Lions team? They can win ten games. Oh, you they can totally win. Digit they can totally oh. win ten games. I see. Totally. The, I they're see, already two and zero. I see this team as a nine and seven football team. I see this. this so they're not going to win ten, but but they can win nine. Oh, but ten and six and nine and seven are two very. You're, you're either it's literally one game. No, no, no. Ten and it's six. Literally one ten and game. six is maybe number one wild card team in your conference. Nine and seven is you're fighting to barely get into the Look, number two. Look, I'm spot. just gonna throw this out. Some of the teams they play this year: Panthers, Saints, Browns, Bears, Ravens, Bears again, Bengals. You're at ten you wins there. there, and if you pull an upset or two, you can. They can totally get there. We'll see. I, I'm I'm not inspired by the defense, but I I, I think Matthew Stafford as the dark horse MVP candidate coming into this year, mm -hmm. I think is still looking pretty pretty good with Jim Bob Cooter so far. But reminder, everyone, this episode is brought to you by MyBookie.ag. It's incredible. A lot it's of amazing. online sports books out there, but MyBookie.ag is the best one. It's the one Harris and I use for all of all. our bets. Use promo code CHAT when you sign up. They mm -hmm. will match your initial deposit. You put down 400 you put down 500 any dollar amount up to 1000 bucks, they're going to match it for you to bet as well. It's free money. Free money. Just it's free awesome. Money. Yeah, it's just free money. Again, folks, that is promo code yeah. chat when you sign up. Head to mybookie.ag or just chatsports.com slash bet. Either one works. Again, promo code chat. Very nice. All right, Tom, it is time mm -hmm. to get into our top 10. And now, to out, not to out him, but our boss had this team at number 19, or excuse me, yes, number 19 on his power rankings. We all had him in the top 10. It is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who look just fine against the Chicago Bears. I like this Bucks team a lot. And much, good. much like the Titans, the Bucks strike me as where the Oakland Raiders were last year. Mm -hmm. And, and, and they've, they, 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 they've been on that path. They've been steadily building. I think the Eagles are where the Bucks were, were last year. This is a team on the rise. I like a lot of their pieces around them. Winston needs to cut down the turnovers. He, he did that against Chicago. But this is a Bucks team heading upward. They've only played one game. I think that kind of keeps them down a little bit here on the top ten. But... I think this is a Bucks team that will be in the playoffs, and they're going to push for that NFC South title. I was. Th this is one of the teams. I'm going to make a little bit of a baseball comparison here. This Tampa Bay Buccaneers team are the Arizona Diamondbacks of the NFL. They're not going to win their division because they have the Atlanta Falcons Look, in front of them. But this team is going to be in the playoffs. Of, this is the number one of, wild card of team of in the NFC. All the teams to pick, you pick Arizona. Yeah, Diamondbacks, they're the number one which, like, wild card team. I get that. But do people actually watch baseball anymore? I watch baseball. Yeah. Baseball's incredible right now. You guys in the comments, let us know if you actually watch baseball. <laughs> but we want to hear. Uh, we're going to have a reaction poll coming up for you guys here, actually. This is a little fun, little fun exercise that we have planned for everyone. If you had to win one game, which quarterback would you choose? Would it be Joe Flacco? Would it be Carson Palmer? Would it be Eli Manning? Or would it be Tyrod Taylor? Now, these are four quarterbacks who are easily middle tier, easily middle tier, but they're fun nonetheless. Okay. First question, how good is my defense? Um, middle tier. Okay. How good is my offensive line? Is it like, Again, is it like average. Seahawks? Everything's oh, average. God, average. Everything's okay. average. You have to win um, a game. I'll take Eli. I, I, okay. I, I don't love that bet. If my offensive line was bad, I would have gone with, with Tyrod Taylor. And then if my defense was really good, I probably would have gone Flacco. But I will go with Eli Manning for the time being, even though I really don't like that pick. Okay, see, so I, I, I'm going to go with Tyrod Taylor because I personally think that Eli Manning is way over the hill. I think Joe Flacco is just bad anyway. 
And I don't even know what Carson Palmer is like. I, I think at least Tyra Taylor can do something with his legs. I just need one game, and I think that if Eli's offensive line isn't terrible, he'll be able to do just enough to give me that win. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, we have just a comment. I, just hope I don't get bad Eli. <laughs> bad Eli is now eternal Eli. All right, we got a comment here from Eric uh, Montellano. I believe I said that correctly. He thinks baseball is cool because <laughs> baseball is cool. Yeah, but Damon agrees with me. No baseball. No, baseball People, is great right look, now. Look, baseball can both be great and also not be worth watching. I will go to baseball games in person. I just don't want to sit in front of my TV for three and a half hours and watch a bunch of guys throw, throw pitches to each other. That's fair. That's fair. I a, it is a boring game to watch. That's fair. I'll give you, it is a boring game to watch. However, it is a fun game to watch highlights of because home runs are awesome. All right. Everything's good to watch highlights of. That's very true. All right. We're going to move in to our a little bit further into our top ten here. Going to number nine. Man, when you struggle to beat the 49ers at home, that's not a great look. We have the Seattle Seahawks sitting in at number nine. And, Tom, it's pretty rough. Yeah, this – look, it's the offensive line. I love the defense. The defense has been great. R Russell Wilson is truly running around for his life out there. And it's killing him. And they, ha they have to find a way to do, to do a, a better job here. So I, I don't know what we're going to see here out, out of this, C this, this Seattle team. Mm -hmm. They have to start doing a better job going forward. And I think we're going to have a big problem here just in terms of the Seattle Seahawks offensive line. It's super rough. I'm not really sure what exactly happened with this offensive line during the offseason. Tom Cable, the vaunted offensive line coach of the Seattle Seahawks, trying to turn defensive tackles into guards and trying to turn right tackles into left tackles and centers into left tackles. It's, it's a big mess. Mm. And I, I don't think they're going to go anywhere this year. Mm. I totally agree. And I think we might see an NFC champion, maybe an NFC divisional game appearance for them. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that's what they've been the past few years. That's just who they are. Yeah, but at this point, I think we're kind of far beyond what we're going to see this year from the Seattle Seahawks. All right, we're going to take a quick little left turn towards the team that lost this week. Number eight, the Dallas Cowboys, yeah. who possibly just went through the worst loss of the Jason Garrett era. They got embarrassed embarrassed on national television it was look i know this the final score ended up being whatever 42 to 17 but they were literally one play away from that being a much closer score game in the end because mm -hmm. they were on like the four yard line and it ended up being a 103 yard pick six yeah so look i think this cowboys team is going to be fine here I, I am just a little bit concerned about what we've seen out of them in the past here yeah and, and I, I still think at the same time you're going to have a pretty rough go of it when you have oh you know no big deal your best corner, or excuse me, your best corner is still out, and your best player on your offense mm -hmm. just doesn't try. That's kind of going to be an issue, just a little bit. Like, you know, you're going to kind of need, like if this team is going to go anywhere, Ezekiel Elliott needs to try. Yeah. And I think that him apologizing for his lack of effort, like Tom, like I said, it's not enough for me. I think you need to suspend him. You don't need to suspend him. Suspend him. That's such a bad idea. Suspend him. Do you want to win games, Harris? Yeah. Then you, then you don't suspend him. Suspend him for a quarter. Because right now you're suspend back. Suspend him for a half. You can send him for a series. He cannot I, – I, Wes Walker got suspended for a quarter for – Which was also feet. stupid. We shouldn't do other stupid things just because a, a different team did something stupid. It wasn't stupid. He deserved his punishment. <laughs> he made some foot jokes. Don't mess with Bill Why Belichick. are we suspending guys for this and then do all this other off-the-field stuff? Is Eagle Elliott for? giving up on a play and not uh, – even admitting that he has a lack, lack of effort is suspension worthy. Or not – excuse me, is uh, – a quarter-long suspension worthy for me, in my opinion. I don't know. All right, we're going to go through our power rankings here that we've gone through so far. We got the Indianapolis Colts at 32. We have the Cleveland Browns, or excuse me, the Jets at 31. The Browns at 30. The San Francisco 49ers at 29. We got the Bengals at 28. The Bears at 27. The Bills at 26. And the Cardinals at 25. We have the Saints, the Texans, Los Angeles football team number one, and the Jaguars 24 to 21. Los Angeles football team number two, and number 20, the Giants, the Vikings, and the Redskins, making up 20 to 17. Then number 16, we have the Dolphins moving into the top half of the NFL. We have the Eagles at 15, the Panthers at 14, the Titans at 13, and then we go 12, 11, 10, and 9 with the Ravens, the Lions, the Bucks, and the Seahawks. Tom, we're moving into our top eight here. Yes. We have a, I think we're doing pretty good so far in this power rankings. I, I think, think we're so. right on line. I haven't seen a, a ton of hater comments, but, but we're at the point now where... This is where it starts to get hate. We're at the really, really good teams, uh -huh. and they all think that they should be number one, which I understand, yeah. but... No, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Only one can be number one. Very true. That's all how right. math works. Moving in, <laughs> moving in to number seven, 
The Green Bay Packers got thrashed against the Atlanta Falcons because for some reason people still think that Dom Capers is a good defensive coordinator. This Packers team is going to do what every Packers team does. They're going to get in the playoffs. They're going to go as, Aaron, as far as Aaron Rodgers can take them. And then a better offense is going to beat them in the playoffs. This defense is bad. Well, maybe. Uh, look, the Packers were, were, were done in because their offense was just brutally injured to start the game. That, yep. that, that should have been a shootout game. Both their tackles were out. Jordy Nelson left the game, killed my fantasy team, killed the Packers as well. Now Jason Spriggs is on IR. This, uh, this offensive line for the Packers is really beat up, mm -hmm. and that's what actually concerns me the most. Not so much the defense, that offensive line, because if Aaron Rodgers doesn't have time, he's going to have a tougher time making plays. He can move, he can run in the pocket, he can do some of those, you know, Russ Wilson-type plays, but... He would prefer to sit in the pocket and make plays yep. from the pocket. Big injury, though, on their defense, losing Nick Perry. Probably their best all-around pass rusher. Clay yeah. Matthews is, is kind of Perry, Perry uh, iffy right now. But Clay Matthews is not anywhere near yeah, exactly. what he once was. But Nick Perry's injury shouldn't be too long-term. Very true. He'll miss this week, but I think he'll be back in a, in a couple of weeks. Okay. All right, moving on to number six here. A team whose offense is only barely scraping their potential. The Philadelphia Steelers who through two weeks, their offenses looked good, not great, but Le'Veon Bell looked better in week two than he did in week one. Yeah. Uh, look, I think, look, they're better at home. That has yep. always been the case for Big Ben the past few years. They are just a better team playing at home for yep. whatever reason, but it works. They like seem to do better on the road, but this is a very, very good Steelers team, and look, they're, they're, they're number six on our, on our power rankings. I had them all the way up at three. Really? I, I think this is a great Steelers team. I think this is a good Steelers team, but again, I think this is a Steelers team that hasn't even touched their potential no, yet. They have like, not. None of these teams have. We're not seeing Bell really do much yet. Martavis Bryant just scored his first touchdown. Yeah. Antonio Brown had a really fun matchup against Xavier Rhodes last week, and they had a great battle. Beat Xavier Rhodes pretty good. But I'll say this. They have never beaten Mike Lennon before in a game. They're 0-3 against Mike Lennon, and they, are one, they have never won a game in Soldier Field since 1935. They don't play there that often, but uh, they're I got their own seven. This is also the Steelers. Yes. So well, they will be fine. We have a comment here from Jake Badger saying the Philadelphia Steelers. Did I say the Philadelphia Steelers? I don't know. Did you? Did I say the Philadelphia Steelers? Sometimes, I, you look, you talk a lot, so I just kind of tune you out sometimes. Producer said, Brett says yes. Producer so Brett says I said the go. Philadelphia Steelers. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, we're, different we're cities. We're going to have people with pitchforks outside of our office. So I, Yeah, for you. The Pittsburgh there you Steelers. Go. I got it this time. Nailed it. I, dis right. I disavow Harris not knowing the difference between Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. <laughs> I, I disavow. <laughs> On that note, let's get into our top five. And number top five, a team I still think is playing better football than they're actually going to look like at the end of this year. It is number five, the Denver Broncos. Two home games, two wins. This Denver Broncos team is going to win the, their games at home. We'll see how they do on the road this week. Well, I'll point this out here. You had them very low entering our preseason power rankings. I, I, I had to talk you down, but this is, this is a little bit better than I thought Denver was going to be. I actually had them at six. I have no issue with them being at five. You know, minus one, plus one, not a huge difference there. Good news is Garrett Bowles actually returned to practice yeah, uh, I am already. I stunned. He looked like he ended his football career. He was sobbing He was on in the tears. He, he did not look good. It was a very but scary so injury. I don't think he's going to play this week, but that's some really good news for, for Denver. Absolutely. Huge it's, news. It's, it's something, it, you know, they, they really need him on that offensive mm -hmm. line. You know, Menelik Watson is, is rough on the other side, and they would have to move him he's over to bad. left tackle. He's so been really bad. Garrett Bowles being able to practice is big time for this Denver Broncos team. Mm -hmm. And just a reminder that this episode is brought to you by MyBoogie.ag. Use promo code CHAT for 100% deposit bonus, Tom. Where you bet, just as important as who you bet uh -huh. on. That's why we... we Suggest you guys use mybookie.ag. Again, a 100% deposit bonus up to a grand. So you put down 100, you put down 500, whatever dollar amount you put down between zero and 1,000, they will match that. If you use promo code chat when you sign up, free money to bet, Harris. Free money. Free money. It, it just, you, you already burned three years. I, yeah, I, I really don't have any <laughs> free money left. My, my picks the past two weeks have been a little rough, but I'm going to do better this week. I can feel it in my bones. All right, let's go through our power rankings one more time before we get into our top four. At number 32, we have the Colts, the Jets, the Browns, and the 49ers, racking up 32 to 29. Then we have the Bengals, Bears, Bills, and Cardinals, not in alphabetical order, though it looks like it. Then we move into 24 to 21. We have the Saints, the Texans, the Rams, and the Jaguars. And then moving into our top 20, we have Los Angeles football team number two with the Chargers at number 20, then the Giants at 19, the Vikings at 18, and the Redskins at 17. Then moving into the top half of the NFL, the Dolphins are at 16, the Eagles are at 15, 
the Panthers at 14, and the Titans at 13. I expect them to move up this week. Hopefully, mm -hmm. the Ravens at 12, who I think are going to drop. The Lions who might. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens with the Lions as the season goes on at 11. The Bucks at 10. The Seahawks at 9. And then the most recent four, we have the Cowboys at 8. The Packers at 7. The Steelers at 6. And the Broncos at 5. And now, Tom, mm -hmm. it is time for the cream of the crop of the NFL. Are you ready? Yes, Are I am. Are you ready for the top four? Because I am very excited to get into our top four. At number four, we have the Oakland Raiders. They have cruised to the first two games of the season. They look exactly like the team they were last year. The defense is solid. The offense is outstanding. Their car looks great. The wide receivers are healthy. And Marshawn Lynch looks like he hasn't missed a beat. Yeah, he, he looks fresh. I think that was key. They very much limited his snaps against the Jets once that game was out of hand, which was, which was some smart usage of him since he is an, an older halfback. Mm -hmm. Look, I think Oakland is, is a four is as low as they go for me right now. Yep. This is a very, very good team. Yes. It, it is a great Oakland team. They, they, they won a, an absurd amount of close games last year, so they have to do better at winning games by a, a bigger margin this year. Uh -huh. But I love this Oakland team, and they are a Super Bowl threat, and that's and, the case with, with these teams here. And then we have Cordero Patterson expecting to see more stats at running back. He has been a very cool weapon for them to use for the first two games of the season. One of the more interesting players yeah. in the NFL, a great it's, special it's, teamer, it's kind of a, a, a taller gadget player than you usually see. He's like a Darren Sproles, but he's a wide receiver first. Yeah, he's... Look, he's fast, and I, I like to see Oakland being creative with the way that, yep. that, that they use him. Yes, indeed, indeed. All right, moving into our number three team. Boy, this is, there's nothing this to worry is, about. This is wrong. Why? This is wrong. How? You cannot have a one-and-one one team in the top three. Yes, you certainly can. I don't. Hold on, hold on, hold on. When Tom Brady drops 450 yards, 300 of which came in a half, and then, excuse me, he's the second quarterback ever to have over 400 yards as a 40-year-old. Yeah. They destroyed the Saints. It's the Saints. This team is fine. Look, you can put him in the top five. I had him in the top five. But at three, ahead of multiple AFC teams who are unbeaten, if we want to look at, at, at what they've done this year, their only win is over the Saints. I, and, and also, hold on. So, wait, wait. The, 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 the Pittsburgh Steelers have impressive wins. They barely beat the Browns. And they beat the Vikings. Oh, wow. Case Keenan went Vikings yeah. team. At least, at least they won their game. And games. the Raiders beat the Jets. Look, I got, go. I got no issue with the Patriots. Be, the the Raiders on. also beat the Titans. So, I think that, that, that was kinda, a good win. I'll give the, yeah. Ra I'll give the Raiders Look, the nice win. This is a good Patriots team. This is a Super Bowl threat Patriots team. But we're doing power rankings based on what they've done this year. They are one and one. They are. I can live with them being in the top five. But ahead of the Raiders, ahead of the Steelers? Oh, no. I, I, they, had, no. they had what had to be no. the most impressive win of any team. It's in the two. Saints. It's Are you matter. kidding me? They, yes, it does. Tom Brady threw three the Denver, the no, no. Half. The what Denver Broncos destroyed the Cowboys, and you want to say the Patriots beating a bad Saints I still, team? This Denver Broncos team has to actually You're win talking about road. We're talking about impressive wins. I think that, that was the, Denver. Look, the Denver Broncos, until that they can prove that they can beat the Patriots, they will not be ahead of them on my power rankings. I didn't say that. They have not I didn't say that. Hold on. The Denver Broncos have not beaten the Patriots in the regular season for three years. I didn't say that. So I, We're talking about most impressive wins. Denver beating the Cowboys was more impressive than the Patriots beating a Saints team with no defense. I want to see, see the Broncos win a game on the road. You're moving Until the goalposts. You're moving the goalposts all over the place. I, I think that this Broncos team is good. I think this look, Broncos team is massively look, overrated. The chat sports staff was on board with you. I was very, yes. much, I was very much alone here. Producer Brett Scott, though, was on my side. So it was, it was five to seven. It so was five to two. Get your comments in here, folks. Yeah. Are the Patriots too high at five? I think I think they are perfect at three. I think they are perfect they are in the too top high. five. They are the third best team in football. They are because because look, you want to look at two teams. You want to just compare the rosters overall. P compare the rosters. Who's better, the Broncos Harris, or the Patriots? Harris, we're talking about different things right now. Who's a better team? Look, I have the Patriots ahead of the Broncos in my power rankings. Yeah. That's not what I'm talking then about. Who do you have ahead of them? I have the Raiders and the Steelers. How are the Steelers better than them? The Steelers are undefeated. They've played great. They've played the Patriots nobody. got pounded by the Chiefs. Yeah, and then congrats. They and beat, then they beat nobody. They beat a Case Keenum-led Vikings team who was never going to win that game. And then they beat a Browns team by three points. Look, we, we got the comments flowing in here. We do. And, and they, they are on board with me here. Of course, because everyone hates the Patriots. The Patriots are one and one. I don't believe a one and one team should be in the top three. I, I, think, I, I don't think it matters. I think that it shouldn't matter due to the fact that this roster overall is still probably the most talented in the NFL. Look, I, I would I would agree with that, but these are power rankings. We have to base this on what we've seen so far. And it seems that while maybe the comment section does agree with you, like you said, 
the chat sports office. I was very disappointed by, by I, I disavowed the chat sports <laughs> office today. <laughs> I, All right. I will I give disavow. You, I can give you the Raiders. I can give you that maybe the Raiders should switch with them three and four. Okay. I can agree to that. Okay. But the Steelers are not better than the Patriots. I not even close. I'm not saying their defense better. is so bad. I'm saying their power ranking should be better. Oh. Being and a you team want that to, you want to talk about bad Keenum. defense? The lead Patriots a, against the Chiefs? Come lead on. A team that Come it, on. Being a team that isn't led by Case Keenum. We'll see how the Steelers do this week. I think the Steelers will have a little bit of a tougher time against the Bears. It'll be a fun game, especially in Chicago. Like I said, look, one and seven in Chicago. Look, they should all just, time. They should wreck the Bears even on the road. If yes. they don't, then, then I will retract my previous statement. They should have wrecked the Browns too on the road. It's fair, but they did. All right, moving into our top two teams because I think these are the, the two most interesting teams in football. At number two, a team that I did not expect to see here. I did not expect to see them this good this early in the season, but the Atlanta Falcons, first game in Mercedes-Benz in Mercedes -Benz Stadium against the Packers, who they played in the playoffs last year, they, they dominated them. They dominated They've the Green Bay Packers. This is a good football team. I actually had Atlanta one. Really? I, I had Atlanta one. It was very much a tough decision. I have no issue with them being at two. I agree. This was not a Patriots debate. This was a, hey, 1A, 1B for me. Mm -hmm. I was super impressed by how well they played against Packers. Yeah, that offensive line is banged up. I thought, I thought they looked great. The secondary looked fine to me. It was all garbage time for Aaron Rodgers. The offense is not going to be as efficient as it was last year. It was That's an unsustainable rate, but it's going to be a very, very good NFL offense. Yes. I'm excited about this Atlanta team. Who, so far, no Super Bowl hangover. Are you worried about their defense? If I had to worry about them with Atlanta, yeah, because mm -hmm. I think their defense, they, they have some holes, but this is still a, a, a good enough defense. Right. Yeah. Very true. All right. We have one more thing for you before we get into our number one team here. Tom, just a reminder for all the people at home yeah. that this episode is brought to you by MyBook. And yeah, they are the Internet's number one sportsbook bet on NFL, college football, and much, much more. I use it for all my bets. Use promo code CHAT when you sign up. Head to MyBookie.ag. Use that promo code. They will match your initial deposit up to a thousand bucks. You put down three hundred, they're going to give you a free three hundred to bet. Three hundred dollars, free money to bet. And like I said, before, it's a win-win. The only thing I love more than three hundred free dollars is four hundred free dollars. It's a win-win. And they Unlike give me that the too. Patriots because they went and lost win. Oh, get out of my face! All right, moving into the team that did beat them and the team that I think has probably been the most impressive team in football through two weeks. It is the Kansas City Chiefs. They look great. Kareem Hunt is running away, literally, with the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. The offense looks great. The defense looks stable. They're fine. I, I didn't anticipate uh, Kansas City being number one uh, when the season started because no. I, I thought they would lose to the Patriots. But that is, I think, the most impressive win so yep. far. I've got, no issue, I've got no issues with them being number one. I, but this, is, this is a really good Chiefs team. I will say this, though. Uh, it has only been one week. We didn't really see it against the Eagles, but for the next couple of weeks, it will Eric be Barry. interesting to see what the that's, impact that Eric Berry has why, on this that's team. That's why I didn't have them number one, because mm -hmm. I think without Eric Berry, that, that, that's a big blow to them. Yes, definitely. And you'll see, and, and you'll see it in the problem. coming weeks, and in a very, very tough AFC West, the best division in football, Absolutely. That's, that could very well swing a game or two. So we have a reaction poll here for you guys. Who do you think is the best team in the NFL? Throw us a heart for the Chiefs. A wild face for the Falcons, a laughy face for the Patriots, and an angry face yeah. uh, for ha, the Raiders. Because the Patriots shouldn't be on there. Ha, 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 ha. They, they, they should still be top five. Sure, yeah. the Steelers are top five. Whatever. I'm actually going to say I, I had them switched. I had the Chiefs at one and the Falcons at two. As the week has gone on, the Falcons have kind of it, – it's tied yo, for me. Yo. No, it's tied one to one. Are I think you, they're even. Are you going to the beach? Why? Because you're flip-flopping all over the place, man. Ah, it's fine. No. I think, I think they're tied for first right now. I think that both of these teams are equivalently good. And I think it would be amazing to see them play a game against each other. I'm done with that. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done with that. Fun. that. But instead, we have on Thursday Night Football tonight, we get the Rams and the 49ers. Oh, <laughs> goody here. yippee ki yeah. Ridiculous. All right, let's get the power rankings one more time for the beautiful people at home. We got our last four, the Colts, the Jets, the Browns, and the Niners. Our next four look a little something like this. The Bengals, the Bears, the Bills, and the Cardinals. Not in alphabetical order, though it is pretty close. <laughs> Moving on to number 24, you have the Saints, then the Texans, Los Angeles football team number one, the Rams, and then the Jaguars at 21. Then Los Angeles football team number two, the Chargers at 20, the Giants at 19, the Vikings at 18, the Redskins at 17. And then we go into the top half of the NFL. We got the Dolphins, the Eagles, the Panthers, and the Titans. And then into the top 12, we have the Ravens, the Lions, the Bucks, and the Seahawks. And then into our top eight in the NFL, the Cowboys, the Packers, the Steelers, and the Broncos. And then our top four, 
the Raiders, the Patriots, the Falcons, and the Chiefs. And also, I should say this, you should expect the Patriots to stay in that number three spot because it's Houston Texans versus New England Patriots week, and this is one of the funniest weeks the AFC oh, another, has to offer. Uh, uh, another every bad year. team the Patriots can be. Every year. This is, this is every year. Yeah. The Texans versus the Patriots is so much fun. Sure. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for us. Remember, remember to go find the NFL Daily Podcast on iTunes and on Google Play for you Android users. You can follow me on Twitter at Sports Scene. You can follow this lovely gent at WhatGoingDowny on Twitter. Remember to download the Chat Sports app at chatsports.com app. We'll see you guys tomorrow for a little more NFL Daily. But for now, adios.